Though Ankh is the third game in the series, uh, it's a little bit of a third act twist. Uh, but we didn't want to just make like Rising Sun Part 2 or Blood Rage Part 2. When you're playing a god, I want to make sure that the both the presence and the absence of that god completely changes the texture of the game for all players. So it's not only about who you're playing, but who you're playing against. If you're playing Anubis, right, who is the uh, keeper of the underworld, you actually um, you change the texture of the game. So normally when players lose figures or monsters in battle, they just go back to themselves. But with Anubis, uh, you take the figures yourself and you trap them in the netherworld that are yours and that they make your god more powerful. And other players actually have to give you followers in order to get them back. Osiris is, well, in the mythology, uh, he was betrayed and killed. Um, and I want to reflect that in the game by having him actually gain a really cool advantage when he's defeated in any conflict. So if, uh, if he's defeated, he actually gets to uh, put a special token on the board uh, where, he can come, where he can rise and come back from later that uh, changes the rules of that particular region to benefit you every single time um, any battle happens there. Uh, the monsters in Ankh play a big role as well. Uh, just like in the other two games, there are a unique set of monsters that are going to be present in every game. Monsters like the mummy, like the Satet, like the uh, Apep, uh, all these cool Egyptian sounding names. Uh, each in this game, you get to use those monsters as your own, uh, just like the other two. It's a little different in Ankh because you can have like, more copies of every miniature. So I can have a Satet, so can you, if we race toward them. And the abilities are so strong and they're so definitive that, for example, a game with the Cat Mummy and a game with Apep, who are mutually exclusive, one will be very, very different and have a different uh, feel, just like the gods. So all of this is in the name of replayability, right? How can every game feel super different and have a great new, new texture from the last one? The game starts with three regions, but during the game, players will get to use camels and caravans to divide that further up, which changes the whole landscape and how the battles are gonna go. The game is competitive, it's a two to five player game, uh, but at some point in the game, uh, two players are going to merge together and both of their gods are going to become one and they're going to play together as a team. Uh, they have to win or lose together and they're always judged by the devotion, the, the, our victory stat, of the lowest player in the game. So it creates this really new dynamic that I haven't seen in games like this. Ankh is an immersive, mythic strategy game for two to five players, it goes from 60 to 90 minutes. Uh, it's competitive, it's uh, both tactical and strategic, and it puts you right into the action from turn one and gets you uh, scared for your life all the way through until the end.